Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and what we have for you now is our review of Xiaomi's 75-inch QLED TV. Now this TV is priced at 1,20,000 rupees and let's get the most obvious thing out of the way. If you are looking for a large screen home entertainment experience for a budget of 1 to 1.5 lakhs, then yes, you can definitely consider the Mi QLED TV because its overall performance is actually very good for the price point and the features that it brings to the table. So let's actually quickly dive deep and see what makes this TV really good and if there are any shortcomings, what they are. Now, of course, it is a 75 inch uh, panel as the name of course suggests and it is a QLED TV. It's very similar to what we saw with the 55 inch QLED TV, but there are a few differences out here. To begin with, this TV has a full array backlighting with dimming zones, which means that if a certain portion of the screen needs to show the color black or needs to go dark, there are zones in that area where the LEDs can go off to give you the feeling of true black. So that is a very good advantage, especially considering the screen size. And number two, this TV is also pretty bright. Now, it is not the brightest TV we have tested in this price range, but it can get very bright to the point where the content can look really exciting. It does bring all the picture presets that we have seen on the Mi QLED TV, the 55 inch and also the recently launched Redmi TVs as well. So when it comes to the settings, uh, you kind of have parity out here. So if you've used one of these TVs in the past, you are going to feel right at home. So let's actually start with the content performance of this TV. Now, uh, to begin with, we played a lot of 4K HDR content, including Dolby Vision and HDR10. So let's start with the Dolby Vision content. Uh, we have a lot of content available on Netflix, Our Planet, the Season 1 episode 1 opener is something that we've always referred to when it comes to the content performance uh, visually and that actually looks great. You have this one sequence where there is a bird in front and the sun behind it and the reason we use this is based on the brightness of the TV more of the bird's beak kind of gets uh, you know vanishes into the sun. So the lower the peak brightness of the TV the more of the beak vanishes. The higher the peak brightness the more of the beak you can see. This is kind of a test that we use to judge peak brightness and this is how we can tell you that you know the TV actually does get pretty bright because more of the beak is visible when compared to some of the other TVs that we've tested. Even the day-night cycle that's shown in our planet actually looks really vivid and vibrant in the uh, you know Dolby Vision Bright preset uh, which we've used on this TV. Of course it has Dolby Vision Bright, Dolby Vision Dark, the standard two presets. We again recommend leaving it in Dolby Vision Bright even if you're going to watch it in a low lit room simply because it just makes everything look a little more punchier. The same can be said about other HDR content or other Dolby Vision content available on Netflix is that it looks punchy and it really does look immersive. Now, for those of you that actually want to tweak around with the backlighting, the contrast, the sharpness, you can do that to get a more accurate picture preset. But what's coming out of the box for Dolby Vision content is actually really good. HDR 10 plus content is another place where we've seen a lot of these TV, especially from Xiaomi, have some form of shortcoming or the other. And that is not present out here. Jack Ryan on Prime Videos is one of the shows that has some some of these conversations that take place in dark rooms and they actually look brighter than they would on say the Mi QLED TV 55 inch on the 75 inch TV and I think this is more to do with the brightness and the fact that the TV has dimming zone so it really doesn't need to try to dim, dim the entire frame to get you that low lit environment kind of a look which is again really good. When you move over to bright content in HDR10+, Plus, which is let's say the Grand Tour on Prime Videos, again, you have this nice desert sequence in Season 1, Episode 1, and it looks good. Now, this sequence is one which has had a problem of green tint in the past, and we did not notice that at all out here. Well, it was there in the select few places, but if you don't know what you're looking for, you aren't going to see it, which is actually a stark improvement from what we've seen in the past. Once again, the only downside to HDR10 Plus content is the fact that there are no picture presets for you to play around with in HDR10 plus so you're stuck with the one preset but you can of course go and tweak the settings as you like moving over to sdr content yet again the one thing that hit us continuously when consuming content even in sdr was just how bright this tv can get spider-man homecoming mission impossible young sheldon all these are movies and tv shows that we watch regularly on a bunch of tvs to get kind of a sense of how visually rich they look now the vivid preset for some reason really felt slightly off especially in a movie like mission impossible and spider-man homecoming but the standard and movie preset did more than enough to compensate for anything that was missing yes the movie preset does make things look slightly warmer while as the standard pre uh, preset has more of a, a cool bias to it and that is something that you can switch between your preferences i have seen a lot of people who are watching content on this tv prefer the standard preset others prefer the movie preset and honestly the biggest difference between do these two presets 
interest was the cool and warm bias so that's something that is as per your personal preferences and tastes so it's safe to say that if you want to consume content on this tv be it in dolby vision hdr 10 plus or even sdr content then you are getting a pretty good package deal However, a lot of you are going to probably want to connect your set-top box to this or maybe watch, uh, you know, standard definition content on this. To that, I will say this. If you have a really good quality DVD uh, lying around and you're going to play it off a good DVD player, then the content is going to look good on this TV. You aren't going to get really sharp edges like you would otherwise with 4K content, but the uh, experience is enjoyable nonetheless. What is the problem is if you are going to play really, really low quality compressed content on this TV, then you are probably going to have a really bad experience because it follows the philosophy of garbage in, garbage out. So you may want to make sure that your source, even if it is standard definition, is a good source. Needless to say, if you're just going to connect your Tata Sky set-top box to this TV to enjoy content, you may be left a little disappointed unless you have the 4K Tata Sky TV box. Even then, there are just limited channels that are in you know, uh, 4K. But yeah, 1080p content and above should look really great. Now, coming to gaming, this is one more thing where uh, we were actually impressed with this TV, but there is a caveat. Now, Xiaomi says that this TV has a 120 hertz panel with MEMC enabled, and that's all that it is. So if you have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, you aren't going to be able to do 4K gaming at 120 hertz. 4K gaming is limited to 60 hertz, and if you are really, really looking for that 4K gaming at 120 hertz for a budget of about one and a half lakh of rupees you are going to take a look at something like the uh, sony x90h which was last year's model the uh, tv is available for about one lakh fifty thousand rupees as of recording this video for the 65 inch variant so you're going down by 10 inches but you do get two hdmi ports on that tv which are full uh, bandwidth with uh, support for vrr and 4k at 120 hertz so when talking about gaming, the only feature you get here is auto low latency mode, something which we saw on the Mi QLED TV as well as the Redmi TV. So it's really sad that they didn't bring, you know, the full 4K 120Hz or even VRR on this TV. But nonetheless, if you're someone that's okay with gaming at 60 hertz and 4k which let's face it most of the new games and the upcoming games on this console generation are going to exploit then you're kind of okay i mean sure xbox has a great catalog of backwards compatible games and even the master uh, you know even the uh, mass effect trilogy can be played at 120 hertz on the xbox but then again those games are far and few if you're okay with 60 hertz gaming on this tv on the new consoles then you won't be disappointed simply because of the local dimming zones that it brings and the brightness now a game like spider-man miles morales which is really bright it's in a well-lit environment you also have some sequences in the dark where the entire room goes dark and you don't get that look of gray that we got on let's say the redmi tv which we recently reviewed right it just black looks black in a lot of places which is nice especially in Spider-Man Miles Morales' suit. Now, another game which actually does exploit HDR on a TV well and has its own built-in HDR settings is Dirt 5. When you keep the game's HDR settings to a minimum, you're actually using the HDR settings of the TV and the console itself and the game looks really bright. You can make that out from the visuals that are on your screen. We've seen a lot of TVs where the game looks dull and we have to pump up the HDR uh, from the game's setting itself, which was not the case out here. Again, a very good thing. Same for a game like God of War and even Returnal. I mean, Returnal is a game in the first biome. You have these really dark environments where in on a TV like the Redmi TV, for example, everything had a shade of gray to it. And the contrast wasn't really that punchy when it came to the enemies shooting their projectiles at you. But on this TV, not only were the enemies projectiles pretty punchy, but they were also really well designed when it came to the environment. I mean, the dark forest in the opening uh, sequence of the game was actually pretty good. So unless you're a stickler for specs on paper, if you're just looking to game at 4K at 60 hertz, the TV works really well for you. Needless to say, it's a great package. Of course, the TV is running on Patchwall, something we've seen multiple Xiaomi TVs do in the past. It's a great UI. It's running on Android 10, giving you the best of both worlds. You can check out our past reviews of Xiaomi TVs and the Redmi TV to know about the UI, needless to say, Patchwall puts content before the service providers. It has its own listers and collections like top 10 in India, Dolby Vision content, HDR10 content, and it has a lot of these bundles uh, which give you access to what's trending and maybe, you know, something that you can discover that you otherwise would have missed. A good addition to this TV is, of course, far field mics. Now, you could actually say, OK, Google, to switch on the TV. You could say it to switch off the TV. You could also use it to bring up the weather, bring up certain channels and shows. But we did find this to uh, give a little bit of a problem. So one of the things we did was actually try to use the Google Assistant to play Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Hotstar. And despite giving it all the possible commands, it refused to do that. So 
I don't know if this is a problem with this TV or if it's a problem with, uh, you know, the Google Assistant, but we did come up with a few hiccups and I think this is something that can be fixed. But eight out of 10 times, it kind of really worked. And for the commands that didn't work, it didn't work at all, you know, so it wasn't a problem with the voice recognition. Now coming to the audio, just like uh, the 55 inch TV, this one also has uh, 30 watts of sound output divided into three drivers on each side. And while the TV can get loud, the one problem we had with it was channel separation. Just to quote an example of a much higher end TV, let's say the Sony A8H, which is an OLED TV. Now that TV has of course Sony's uh, acoustic surface technology where the, where the screen vibrates to generate the sound, right? So if someone is talking from the top left corner of the screen, that's where the sound comes from. That's just to give you an example of separation from left to right. So when Tom Cruise rides a motorcycle in Mission Impossible from the left to the right of the screen, you can actually hear the sound move from the left to the right. I kind of expected the same thing from the speakers of the Mi TV to have some good channel separation, especially when you have something like, let's say, Ready Player One, which is in Dolby Atmos mastered on the Apple TV, uh, you know, app, if you have it on a gaming console or the Fire TV stick or the Apple TV box, you know, uh, Apple TV 4K, whichever one, it has very good sound mastering. You know, you could hear the sounds coming from all directions if your TV has those good speakers. On the Mi QLED TV, the 75 inch one, the sound was good, it was acceptable, it lacked bass, there was a little bit of bass, it can get the job done for a good immersive experience, but it lacked that separation, that immersion that comes when you expect such a big screen TV. Needless to say, if you're getting this TV, you may as well get a really good sound bar or if you have a home theater at home, this is going to be the perfect companion for that because as immersive as the visuals can be, the audio left me wanting more and that's probably because of the size of this TV. Uh, Xiaomi has changed the design a little bit as well. You have the uh, same, you know, uh, borders with these premium finishes designed by Xiaomi on the side, but it's the feet which are actually really new on this TV. You have two separate feet holding the TV in place, but there is this metal strip that joins the two feet, kind of giving it a premium look. Also, I think it just helps the TV stand a little more sturdily on a table because as much as I tried to wobble it, the TV didn't wobble so much. So it was overall a great experience. So as much as I've praised this TV and spoken a little bit about the shortcomings, the most important question to answer is whether you should buy this TV. And for answering that question, let's expand the budget a little bit. Rather than keeping it at a strict 1,20,000 rupees, let's say between the bottom spectrum of 1 lakh rupees and the upper spectrum of 1,50,000 rupees, right? A 20, 25,000 rupee gap out here you aren't going to get such a great experience for 75 inch screen size with local dimming or QLED backlighting, pretty decent brightness. So considering this price range, you are getting the size that you want, which is 75 inches. But what are your other options? Now, if you're someone that's dedicatedly into gaming, you have a PS5, a Series X, an NVIDIA 30 series GPU, and you want the best display money can buy for these devices, then you may want to really consider reducing your size to 55 inches. And for the same price as the Mi QLED TV 75, you can get the LG C10, which is an OLED TV. So not only are you getting the perfect blacks and some great contrast ratio and colors, but the LG C10 also brings with it four HDMI 2.1 ports, full bandwidth, which means you get get VRR 4K at 120 hertz support for free sync and support for G sync. So there's a lot of technology out there, but yes, you are compromising on the size by a whopping 20 inches, which trust me when I tell you is a lot. Nonetheless, we have reviewed the 48 inch C10. You can go check that out and the performance of the 55 inch should be quite similar. So if you are more into gaming and don't mind losing out on the screen size, the C10 is still the best option. Now, if size is equally important to you and you don't mind increasing your budget, so let's say for about 1,50,000 rupees, you get the Sony X90H which is a 65 inch TV. It has two HDMI 2.1 ports. It's also full array uh, LED backlighting with local dimming. It is not QLED, but it does have Sony's tri-luminous display, which can produce some fantastic colors. It, in my opinion, is also a little brighter than the Mi QLED TV 75 inch, but we don't actually have the numbers. So it's going based on what I remember reviewing these TVs. You are getting the 65 inch variant of the Sony X90H for 1,50,000 rupees as of recording this. And of the four HDMI ports, you're getting two of them which support 4K at 120 Hertz, VRR, ALLM, and also eARC, which all the three TVs I'm talking about here support. So, uh, and you're getting Android TV UI on the Sony TV as well, but it is giving you a few more gaming related features, but you are losing out on the size by 10 inches. So 
the fact that now we have a Xiaomi TV competing with the top of the line LGs and Sonys and despite the fact that you're getting smaller LGs and Sonys for that price makes Xiaomi a great value for money proposition if you are looking for a package deal and okay compromising on some of the features. Yes, for some of you who are finicky about colors, there may be some inaccuracies out of the box on the Xiaomi TV. But then again, if you're one of the finicky ones, you will be able to calibrate this display with your own ways to ensure you get good color output. But for the package that's on offer for the price of 1,20,000 rupees, the Mi QLED TV 75 inch is a pretty good deal. You're getting good Dolby Vision performance, good HDR performance, good standard definition performance as well, good SDR performance. You're getting pretty decent audio but then again if you're getting such a big tv you may as well invest in a soundbar or a home theater as well xiaomi's ui is pretty staple and the remote control is something that we've uh, seen xiaomi deliver for many many tvs in the past maybe they could have done something slightly more premium considering uh, you know the features on offer on this tv you do have a far field mics as well to you know control the tv by calling out the assistant by saying something as simple as okay google but whether you are going to use that or not is definitely up to you but overall, Xiaomi has made a great TV, which does bring with it some really, really good features. And the shortcomings are short enough that you can overlook them if you are looking for a cinematic experience. So there you have it, guys. That was our review of the Mi QLED TV 75-inch one. We are pretty impressed with what this TV brings to the table. And also, you know, its shortcomings are really something that you can overlook, especially if you are someone for whom size is more important. And as we've recommended uh, a little while ago, you have the other options you can check out if you're okay going a little smaller so there you have it guys that was our review of the me qled tv 75 inch as always you can let us know what you thought of this video in the comment section below and for more from the world of technology you can subscribe to the channel we will catch you in another video it's goodbye for now